And good morning, and you may be seated. Well, we've reached the uh, final Sunday of Advent, the fourth and final one. And so is Karen here, if Karen would come up as well. We're asking, we've had our Sunday school students light the first three candles, and now we're going to ask our Sunday school teachers to do the four. And uh, one, Anne LaFleur, is not able to be with us here today, but we are going to recognize her as well uh, for being one of our Sunday school teachers. So, if you have the song sheet, and if you'd like to follow along, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Prince of Peace and Lord Jesus Christ, Ruler of the world to come, you will return with power and glory in the clouds of heaven. Now you dwell among us in the most blessed sacrament of the altar, not as our judge, but as our brother, who wishes to share with us the riches of his inheritance. Here we ask you the petitions of your people. Have mercy, O Lord, have mercy. Prepare our hearts for a fervent celebration of your nativity. We ask you to hear us, O Lord. Lead all those who doubt and disbelieve to acknowledge your divine glory. We ask you, hear us, O Lord. Help the poor, console the afflicted, and deliver the oppressed. We ask you, hear us, O Lord. Banish from our midst all quarrels and wars, lies, treachery, and injustice, and make us all one in you. We ask you, hear us, O Lord. And however you'd like to do an order, that is the first candle right there. There you go. I give you a new commandment, love one another. This is how all will know that you are my disciples. Every moment during Advent can be an expression of love. Time spent praying, planning, cooking, decorating, wrapping gifts, even shopping can be acts of love for your family and friends. Add a silent prayer to your Advent activities. <laughs> Jesus is love. It can change your whole attitude because love is the reason for the season. Thank you very much, ladies, and thank you for being our Sunday school teachers. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. God, the Father in heaven, have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity in one God, have mercy on us. They would understand your holy will, grant our prayer, Lord. They would realize our true relationship with you in this life and the life to come. Grant our prayer, Lord. May we continue to work with you in building your kingdom on earth. Grant our prayer, Lord. May we unite ourselves with you in the sacred mystery of the altar. Grant our prayer, Lord. May we recognize the greatness of this most holy sacrifice through which we worship you. Grant our prayer, Lord. May we feed on the bread of life no more to hunger. Grant our prayer, Lord. May we have a share in the doctrine of Jesus on the cross. Grant our prayer, Lord. May we fill our lives with your ideas. Be joined with you in the supper of the Lord. Grant our prayer, Lord. May we proceed always and everywhere in your all-pervading presence. Grant our prayer, Lord. May we end our days with your holy name in our hearts on our lips. Grant our prayer, Lord. Forgive our sins, O God. Grant our prayer, Lord. Cleanse and renew our hearts. Grant our prayer, Lord. 
Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, that by following your holy will, we may gain eternal salvation. Amen. Well, I welcome you here on a rather dreary uh, December morning. It was, you know, it's just unbelievable. It's been snowy and freezing, frigid cold. It gets warm for rain, and now it's just go back to the freezing cold. So this stuff here is for all of you who don't pray for snow. You got all of this. It's all your fault, not mine. Thursday, I had to go pick up Amanda from college. Amanda is now homesick. Uh, but we picked up Amanda, and I'm going driving up there, and it's up by Son of Key, New Hampshire. And I'm in a whiteout condition. I call up Sharon back home. It's completely sunny, and I'm driving along. Can't see two feet in front of me. Blizzard snow. And my beloved wife, I tell her about these conditions, life-threatening conditions. Uh, she says, don't forget to bring my scarf back. So, so that was Thursday. Friday, we go into Boston, and uh, you know, it was like they had a warning talk about how cold it was, you know, life threatening cold. We go out to Boston for our annual trip, we go to see a concert. I mean, people are everywhere. You know, you know, that cold and people are there. Saturday morning, wake up, there's beautiful snow coming down. The roads are terrible. People are everywhere. The stores were mobbed, everything, the restaurants were mobbed. So if you got the will, I mean, They'll, they'll go. They'll go somehow. They'll find a way to get through it all. Um, but you know, it's it's a it's a nice time of the year, and I do hope that we have a white Christmas. I hope this uh, sticks around for a white Christmas. Uh, but we are also at that fourth Sunday of Advent. Uh, there is no more light to offer without lighting that Christ candle, which we will do in one week's time at Christmas Eve. But this is all of the light of the Advent season. We have the, the candle of hope, faith, joy, and love. And uh, if we can really bring that light into our lives and then through us out into the world, uh, Christmas will be for real. Uh, so those candles are a very profound message of the, uh, the message of hope, faith, joy, and love. And so with that message that we are now bringing to a conclusion this Sunday uh, in our hearts and in our souls, uh, please make an examination of your conscience in preparation for Mass. Speak your precious word to us, that we 
may celebrate the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, with great joy. He has come, he is almost in our midst, and he will come again. We ask this through the same, Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. The lesson for this morning's Holy Mass is taken from the Old Testament book of the prophet Isaiah. Again the Lord spoke to Ahaz, Ask for a sign from the Lord your God, let it be deep as the netherworld or high as the sky. But Ahaz answered, I will not ask, I will not tempt the Lord. Then he said, Listen, O house of David, is it not enough for you to weary men, but you also weary my God? Therefore the Lord himself will give you this sign. The virgin shall be with child, and bear a son, and you shall name him Emmanuel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Awesome indeed is the Lord's majesty, and wonderful is his power. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, I, Jesus, sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright morning star. Alleluia, alleluia. Cleanse my heart and my lips, Almighty God. You cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal. In your mercy, cleanse me, so I may worthy proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips that I may worthy proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the holy gospel according to St. Matthew. Now this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they had lived together, she was found to be a child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home, for it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been, has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and he took his wife into his home, and he had no relationship with her until she bore her son, and he named him Jesus. This is the gospel of the Lord. into a pizza parlor in Washington to investigate for himself 
if Hillary Clinton was running a child sex ring out of the basement. He was motivated, motivated by fake news. He wanted to know for himself what was going on in the basement, even though there was no basement there. So Saturday Night Live had a whole lot of fun with this story. And I bring it up now because it's something they said in jest, but it's important for us people of faith to really think about. The Pope had come out and made a statement in opposition to this rise in, in fake news and a lot of the stuff that it's causing people to do. And the fake news commentator on Saturday Night Live, however, then made a rather awkward joke that even people like the Pope, who, are, who hear voices coming out of the sky, who hear voices coming out of burning bushes, remember Mount Sinai, remember even like, you know, John the Baptist at the baptism of Jesus with, this is my son, that's what he's referring to. He said, people like that who believe in voices out of the sky, voices out of burning bushes, they don't even believe in fake news. The implication being that the truths that we, as people of faith, call revealed, that they are a, a suspect to people outside of the faith, that they are the same thing as fake news. Now, we here this morning, on a miserable morning, a lot of people tried to be here, I'm sure, but looked outside, saw the ice, saw the rain, and said, no, I'm not going. But we are here today because we are people of faith, and this is important for us to be here. By definition, this means that we trust in things that are unseen, unproven, and even right down to the fact of unprovable. We believe, for example, that what takes place here is beyond what can be seen. We believe that somehow, in what we do here in worship, that heaven and earth actually touch each other. There's a, a wonderful line later in the liturgy where it says that God sends his angels down and that they take our offering up to God's altar up in heaven. We touch each other right here in this holy place. And there's that whole unseen mystery that we're not only receiving bread and wine and water, but the mystical body and blood of Christ when we come forward to receive communion. We are gifted by God to be able to believe in these sort of things. Faith is a virtue, says the church, that God gives to us. We don't make it up on our own. Faith comes from God. But for others, it's just not the same. And that's where that Saturday Night Live comment comes from. For people outside of faith, voices coming out of the sky, voices coming out of burning bushes, they simply are not reliable. For them, it's just like fake news stories about human trafficking out of pizza parlors by Hillary Clinton. Now today, it's the fourth Sunday of Advent, the fourth and the final candle of the Advent wreath. They've all been lit, and that fourth candle is the candle of love. But there's a beautiful and a profound symbolism in the lighting of those four candles, faith, hope, joy, and love. They symbolize for us the increasing light in the world as we approach ever closer to the birth of Jesus. But that light, it stays right here in this sanctuary. It grows brighter with each passing Sunday, but that light of the Advent candle, it stays right here in the sanctuary. But all changes at Christmas Eve when we gather with the angels to proclaim the birth of the Son of God in the middle of one of the longest, darkest nights of the year, we light the Christ candle, and then as part of our announcement that Jesus has been born in Bethlehem, we do something special. We take the light from the Christ candle and we carry it out to the sanctuary and out to every single person in that congregation holding one of their little candles. That symbolism is that the light that is locked in the sanctuary before Christmas leaps over the barrier and in a sense enters right into the world and moves out beyond the sanctuary, the place of the holy, and becomes a part of the world through each and every one of us. Last Sunday we read of Jesus' testimony about John the Baptist when Jesus says of him, truly I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist, yet the least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. As soon as Jesus enters in the world, as soon as we believe in Jesus, all of the great prophets, all of the great teachers that come up to Jesus, the least in the kingdom of God is even greater. Everything up until the moment of the incarnation, the moment when God leaves the glories of heaven and enters into our world as one of us, and that little baby child Jesus, all of that was about God in our world. All of that changes on Christmas. Christmas is a new reality. It's not about God in our world, but it's about actually God in the world. And with that singular event, the coming of Jesus, 
God leaps beyond this uh, barrier between the holy and the profane. And when God comes into our world and becomes a part of our world, our world in a certain sense becomes a part of God. The light of the Advent wreath can only grow so bright. There's no more candles in the Advent wreath. It is the light of the Christ candle on, sir, on Saturday night that we take from here. And then we fill this room with its light. This is God's answer to those who think that faith is only about voices out of the sky and out of burning bushes who, can see, who can't really see the difference between faith and faith. So God becomes real in Jesus. No more is it only disembodied voices from somewhere up there called heaven. With the coming of Christmas, we can now speak about Emmanuel. And as we read in today's gospel, that means God is with us. And Barbara, as she read for us at the beginning with that liturgy, the lighting of the candle, she read from John's gospel, and it says that Jesus said to his followers and to each and every one of us here, I give you a new commandment. And only God can do that. No prophet can give a new commandment. Only God can say, I give you a new commandment. And Jesus says, love one another. This is how all will know that you are my disciples. That's that fourth and final candle. We can do no more than that. Love one another. Christmas is God not coming into our world as Jewish, not coming into our world as Christian. Christmas is God coming into our world as one of us. And he came as the most basic common denominator so that all of us could share in Jesus. And this speaks to the fact that God is concerned about all of creation, and most especially about all people everywhere, even the ones who at present can't tell the difference between faith and faith. And this is why when that holy child grows up and begins to teach, he shares with us that new commandment, the command to love one another, and that this love will testify to the fact that we are actually followers of Jesus. If we don't love well, we don't believe in Jesus well. No longer do people who are not yet gifted with faith have to rely only on voices out of the sky or burning bushes. Now they can see the real effects of God in our world by the different way in which we, which each and every one of us here as Christians, act on love. Our acts of love and our acts of charity inspired by Christ are the hard evidence that God is real and that Christmas is real. That poor guy from North Carolina had to go looking for a basement under a pizza parlor because he was listening to fake news. When Christians and non-Christians want to know about the reality of God, they're going to look at us. You know, if you don't have faith, you're not seeing anything special here. If you don't have faith, you don't see anything special in this congregation. But if you don't have faith, you can still see the good that we do out of love. We make faith real. We have one week's time until the wonder of Christmas is upon us. So in that one week's time, no matter how busy it gets, make time for that Christ child. Even share a Christmas invitation with others to help the light spread even further so that once it comes from here, we go even further out into the world. And let us celebrate that mystery of Emmanuel, that wondrous promise that in that little baby who will be right here next Sunday morning, that somehow in that little baby is a man. God is with us. And for these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>
And are there any other prayers that you would like to offer from the congregation on this time? For all these things, Lord, we pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven.
our sacrifice may be accepted to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Heavenly Father, we set before you bread and wine, by which we offer ourselves to you as well, and through which you give us your Son. Help us to grow in your service, that we may become a worthy home for Jesus Christ when he enters into our world at his birth on Christmas. We ask this through the same, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Father will love him, we will come to him and make our dwelling place with him. 
I consecrate myself for their sakes now, that they may be consecrated in truth, that all may be one, as you, Father, are in me and I in you. I pray that they may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I living in them, you living in me, that their unity may be made complete. Father, all those you gave me, I would have in my company, where I am to see this glory of mine, which is your gift to me, because of the love you bore me before the world began. I myself am the bread of life. No one who comes to me shall ever be hungry. No one who believes in me shall ever thirst. After these and other words of the Archbishop's prayer, and with holy fervor, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again he gave thanks to you, blessed him, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, my Lord, we your servants and your faithful people, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son and our Lord, as well as his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we receive from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the body and the chalice of everlasting salvation. These gifts we receive with a joyful countenance, as from him who is the giver of all temporal and eternal good gifts, and with an unshakable faith that they will become for our souls a saving remedy. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, to command that our offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your highest altar and to the presence of your divine majesty. That we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who have passed on to eternity. To these souls, Lord, and to all who rest in Christ, grant everlasting life, and to those who are in life straight from the path of righteousness, unmindful of your fatherly love, Mercifully sure in their sufferings, we ask this in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts are always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after the divine Master, merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, and with him, and in him, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example, we say with confidence.
Deliver us, Lord, from all evils, past, present, and future. And by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, the other blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, is also Andrew and all the saints, grant us peace in our days, supported by the help of your mercy, that we always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit forever and ever. of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching. And never let me be parted from you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be caused for my judgment. Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become my safeguard and healing remedy. My saving master, awaken in me a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make me your willing servant, to zealous fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite me entirely with you, my Lord and my God. Grant this who lives and reigns of God the Father, in unity with the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord for all the grace that he has rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon the Lord, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy of you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
are you, God our Father, for you sent your Son into this world to save us all. We receive him in the Holy Word and in the Holy Eucharist and look forward to that day when he will come and get in glory. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Sacrifice which I, though unworthy, have offered in the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. For your mercy may be effective for myself and all of those for whom I have offered it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found light, light for the light of men. The light shines on in darkness, the darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John, sent by God, who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, and his own did not accept him. And he who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, were begotten not by blood, nor by carnal desire, nor by man's willingness, but by God. And the word became flesh, and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. 